All right, chat. It is now time for lunch, which means, and that's good news, that means it's time for Magical Hats because I woke up this morning and I saw there was a new episode. I already knew it was going to be a good lunch break today. Pog you. Magical Hats lunch break. There we go. The title for this one is, is legacy support actually good? Which I don't even know what that means. Does that mean like giving old archetypes support is a good or bad thing? Is that, this, is that what the discussion is about? Like, uh, okay, interesting topic. All right. It's not something I have an opinion on yet, I think. It's just, I, I kind of like it when they do that, when they give old archetypes support. It depends on how they support them. Like, if they give them cool support, I'm all for it. But if they give them, like, a super broken card that negates everything, like, I don't know, what, what's, a, what's an example of that when they took an old archetype and just made it broken by giving them one stupidly powerful card? I'm sure there is something out there. Math mech? Well, math mech is not really a legacy archetype, bro. If if that's not my legacy archetype. <laughs> uh, Asa Reich, thank you for the six months. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Welcome back. You've triggered my trap card, the magical hats. In this series, myself and three of the top Yu-Gi-Oh! streamers will give their unfiltered, uncensored, and uninformed takes on some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s most pressing issues. The catch? One of these four has a fake take, and it's up to the rest to find the liar. It's time to play! Okay, once again, I need to remind myself of the rules for this. If Farfa is being reasonable, he is the imposter. If Gage makes sense, he is also the imposter. Hey, magical hats. That works. Well, folks, we are back once again with another heaping helping of hats. I am joined as ever by the one, the only disencoder, the one, the only gauge, the one, the only farfa. How are y'all doing today? I'm good. Outstanding, Joseph. I'm ready to game. We are going to be talking about uh, a style of card that I'm sure most of you are familiar with, Legacy Support. So if you don't know, frequently Konami will release cards that support archetypes that were printed previously in new sets. Today we're going to be talking about if the way those cards are made, oh. uh, disseminated, Stop. Printed, Why did you do that? designed, is good or not. Basically just Legacy Support with a big question mark after it. And, uh... Kevin, you want to go first? So, uh, I think legacy support as a whole is good or bad, which I guess I'm just like going to take a very centrist approach here. There's a lot of times Konami will make legacy support for a deck. Which oh, I know. I Right off the bat, I, I, I can think of one bad thing of legacy support, which is that sometimes really old cards get really expensive for no reason, and they for some reason they reprint them way too late. I think that happens sometimes. Surely. Or like cards just, I hate when there's like this random ass card from 15 years ago that now is like 15 bucks and like why is it not being reprinted? Like what could be their reason? Like Gishki is a good example. Gishki was never meta relevant. But why are they not reprinting Gishki cards in time? Surely that would help them sell product because they're not making money with an old Gishki card anymore. Right? With like... Gishki Abyss from Hidden Arsenal 2 or some shit. They're not making money with that. They're not selling any Hidden Arsenal 2s anymore. Why did they not, like, reprint that at the same time that that stuff came out? Right? Why, why not? It would make everyone happy. They would, they would sell their product because people would want to pull a, G a Gishki Abyss instead of paying the money for the old copy. And uh, we didn't have to go and scramble and pay 10 bucks each for, like, super rare Gishki Abysses when then they got the deck anyways by banning Elf. Like, I, I don't understand that. Well, so I think if done right, if, if they just do that properly, legacy support, then that would not be an issue. But the way they're doing it now, that tends to be an issue very often. B. Hey, so this deck is really bad. Let's print one card that reads win the game. For example, like Magical Musketeer Max. Like Magical Musket, 
awful archetype. Max, you look at that and you read, this is the most broken card I've ever seen. It just does literally everything, which all it really achieves in a deck is it makes it so that one specific card must resolve. Otherwise, the this. deck is still unplayable. The other kind of legacy support I don't like is when they take an archetype that's bad and they say, yo, give them a floodgate. Yep. Where I found legacy support to actually be good I agree is in structure decks. Whenever they release a structure deck for an archetype that was already out, I find that the legacy support that they give it is pretty good. Uh, the Dark World one, not the best deck I've ever seen, but still, it wasn't like Floodgate Turbo or whatever. They gave them some, you know, neat stuff that meshes well with the archetype. So right. whenever you see them in like structure <laughs> decks, I the Dark World deck is not the best example because I I wouldn't I would not. There's a lot of adjectives you can use for Dark World, but um, that deck is not neat. <laughs> The stuff that that deck does on turn one is not something I would classify as neat. <laughs> Find that when they give them two or three cards to round out the archetype, I think that is really good as legacy support. But when they just give them one really strong card or a big floodgate or something, it's kind of like a cop out and I'm not a really big fan of it. Farfa, what do you got? So overall, I think legacy support, uh, like obviously as a concept is good. Like everyone wants legacy support, but everything else outside of the concept is just bad. The design, the release schedule, Everything sucks about legacy port support. This is a personal gripe and it's not very objective, but I hate the disparity in the legacy support. So obviously I understand the anime ones are going to be the most profitable because it's a business, etc., etc. But I just hate how infinitely more legacy support there is for like blue eyes and dark magician and Thank heroes you. than there is for other <laughs> Literally archetypes. every single pack we get <laughs> in new dark. That. Yeah. I couldn't believe that is his So I just absolutely hate us. that because I feel like the community support for something like unironically volcanics and stuff is like pretty high right um and talking about like the thing that's the worst oh, as well imagine the if they made imagine if they made uh an actual like volcanic into a, a meta deck oh i would love that volcanic is so based quality of the legacy support most legacy support cards are genuinely bad like yeah. for example madolce sistar is like that is not what the deck needed uh, as an example the evil yeah. swarm origin uh... That card's like actually still kind of like it's it's a good no, card, yeah, but yeah, I, 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 I understand the argument is it's not what it needed, but it's still a pretty good nope. card. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me give you some more examples. Don't worry. Uh, Evil Swarm Origin. That card has zero <laughs> mechanical synergy with the deck it was made for. Um, Isolde and Halka Fibrax are badly designed because they are so generic to the point that they're going to get them banned. I'm sure all three Crestron players in the world are really upset because that card was really good in Crestron, and then they banned it because of how generic it was. Rest in peace, hard leg. Uh, junk connector again anti-synergy junk speeder literally says you cannot perform a summon for the rest of the turn except synchros and they made a link monster I, it, it just anti-synergy shadol construct who is flip summoning shadol monsters and then Whoa, linking away flip that. monsters that, that card's <laughs> that card's that card's nice i'm not gonna lie for the most part like most legacy cards either are not what they need in the sense of like sistar are objectively just badly designed like halka fibrax or are so bad that you wouldn't even run them and like kevin mentioned the big cop out for a lot of legacy support is just yep Here's a floodgate. Uh, I have a pretty similar. Okay. Um, once again, very sus situation because I have to say, mostly, I agree with Farfa, <laughs> which is already kind of sussing me out. You know what I mean? That's for the most part, that is very reasonable because there's a good point. There's a lot of legacy archetypes that get way less support than others. It's not distributed equally. Right? Definitely not. There's definitely way too much. Like, there's archetypes that have, like, cards out the wazoo, like, for no reason. And some others get almost nothing. And then if they get something, it sucks. Right? And that is definitely valid criticism. I think my take on this entire situation is that I really like the idea behind legacy support. I think we can all get behind the fact that being able to play those like nostalgic archetypes again is a very good idea it's very cool to to think about the possibility of instead of always making new archetype after new archetype after new archetype sometimes going back to what you once liked and giving it a new spin is a is a very good concept that's a cool idea i'm, I'm all here for it but in practice there's a couple things that they definitely need to do better if they want it to be like there's like half of them sucks half of them is poorly designed in the way that it's like either way too generic like Halka Fibrax was like that was a good example of like 
legacy support gone horribly wrong because like that didn't benefit a single Christron player. Uh, and then there's also ones where like it's just a floodgate or it's just one stupidly broken card. The rest is still awkward. So it all centers around that one card, you know, like uh, the the Musketeers uh, example or also I think Trap Trick Sarah is an example like that or Math Mech Circular, even though Math Mech is not a legacy archetype, at least not in my legacy book, but yeah take to the last two which is they leave a lot to be desired either really easy if it's gauge or really hard if it's not (laughs) um i i I really gotta agree with farfa i feel like uh, the way that legacy support is trickled out is really frustrating uh the number one criticism i have of it is one that you both identified which is they keep giving them fucking floodgates what is it uh ghost meets girl mayakashi card that just got released i know so many people that are like deep in the tank on zombie combo and when they heard there was new mayakashi stuff they were so excited just to find out that it's a fucking vanity's emptiness like oh joy um but i also do kind of want to push back about like kevin's point about how some structure Structures give good stuff to legacy archetypes. Um, the Dark World one, for instance, uh, while Genta searches Gates of Dark World, the only other Dark World from the old series that you're playing is like maybe Saluri Silva if you're doing hand loop stuff. Like frequently when they retrain archetypes. That's not true. You play Snow, you play you can play Brow, you play Grappa because they gave them a Grappa fusion. That's not true. Types. Um, it's done in such a way that Either the old cards are huge, terrible bricks you never want to draw, like how Gate Guardian has played out, or new cards completely eclipse the old cards. And if that's the case, why not just retrain them? You know, why not just play you know ABC style? Oh, I can think of a I can think of a deck that recently a legacy archetype that recently got retrains. <laughs> can someone think of Can someone help me out here? Because I feel like there has been. A very old archetype recently that had has, has received retrains, and um, I don't know how that turned out. Chat, anyone remembers? Anyone remember the retrains? I can't remember. I like my. I think my brain is once again protecting me from remembering those instances in recent Yu-Gi-Oh history because it's just healthier for myself. Well, yeah, I don't know. Dangerous territory there, buddy. Uh, X Valverde, thank you for the seven months. Thank you for your prime. Appreciate that. Thank you for the support. Uh, archetypes in which uh, there's new cards that evoke the same feeling as the legacy support, but you don't have to play like fucking V Tiger Jet or something. I guess the. I am not a fan of that. I am not a fan of that concept of like having to play the old cards. It's like the same thing with the. The, the the dinosaur technically legacy support that wants to incentivize you to play freaking Frostosaurus in your deck. No, that's not fun, dude. I don't want to play Frostosaurus. No one asked for that. I don't want to put Frostosaurus at 2600 one tribute vanilla in my deck. I don't want to do that. Do not give me legacy dinosaur Frostosaurus support, please. No, I'm good. One place I'd say I really do like legacy support is when it's released for archetypes that came out in like the last three years. Like they have hit it out of the park with some cards like Diameter, um, Rick a Princess, uh, but these are like the support card that was missing from the original wave of an archetype that was released in 2019. Like if you go back pre-Duelist Alliance, you are probably not saving those archetypes. Okay, all right. Well, picking back off of what you said, Joseph, uh, the thing is, is like, I think Konami is established with how they've been creating legacy support now is... Okay, so just to summarize, the point was that, that last point was that very, very old archetypes tend to be impossible to salvage. You either give them new support that completely, like, invalidates the old cards, so you only play the new cards, and then it's not really support, then it's a new deck. Or you, uh, you make it good, but the, the old cards are, are complete bricks in the deck, right? And I, I, can, I can get behind that. That is, a, that is a somewhat valid concern. Somewhat, right? Because there is definitely archetypes where like, like Gate Guardian, for example, I could have told you beforehand, if they said, hey, we want to make Gate Guardian support, I could have told you beforehand that that deck probably ends up being 
either not playing any of the gate guardians or the gate guardians are going to be bricks in it like because those cards are level seven two tribute monsters with basically no effect and very mediocre stats that's never going to be a, those are never going to be good cards again that just doesn't work like that it just does not work like that for a lot of old archetypes you know so you would have to specifically go back and pick archetypes that are like legacy but they have cards that in the right circumstances could be good like for example i don't know let's let's keep it with the volcanic example from earlier like there's a couple cards in volcanics that have the potential to still be good cards in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. like for example volcanic shell is a card that if you make a card around it that card's still abusable in 2023 standards, right? Like the, the card that like if you could use, if you had actually ways to tutor the card and use it as good discard fodder, I, I would not be completely surprised by the fact that like new volcanic support finds a way to make volcanic shell actually usable. Or like volcanic rocket. You give that thing a new busted search target that's important to the new way of playing volcanics. Yeah, I'm still going to play volcanic uh, rocket. You know what I mean? So. That would be an example of an archetype that you can probably give support to in a way where they can still play with the old cards. You just like give them new ways to use those cards, right? Uh, similar, they did great with Thunder Dragon. Besides Colossus, let's not talk about Colossus, but they did great with Thunder Dragon, for example, right? Um, so I think it's just this, it's a really hit or miss territory, right? Because it's, it's very, very easy to mess it up and make the archetypes just end up being bad. And then sometimes they, they really want to make them good. And so they give them cards that are just way too powerful. And then they even, like, sometimes by mistake, I suppose, make them really gen generic, like Hulk of Fibrax. And then that ends up in, like, different decks, not where it's meant to be, you know? To sometimes make these older archetypes plausible to be playable at all, you have to give it a completely different reskin, like you said. One of the things that really reminds me is like Archfiends. Like I was, they got announced for Archfiend support back in the day, and the Archfiend support literally does nothing, <laughs> nothing similar to the regular OG RG Archfiends, and um, even Naturia too. The OG the new Naturia card, you play just the new Naturia cards, and yeah. then like one copy of Sunflower, and that's what you're doing. And I'm gonna say I don't think that's that bad of a thing, right? Like another thing you can really like uh, assume is like. Uh, cards that got a completely different retrain were the Ashizu cards, right? Like, they don't do uh -oh. anything that Agido and Keldo and stuff. How are you going to make those cards playable, right? To <laughs> There's be fair, no those way. old cards don't do anything anyway, right? They yeah, so I mean, do like, yeah, right, yeah. I think yeah, they, it's they, some... Like, the Gate Guardian pieces don't do anything, and they throw those in there. Yeah, yeah, so in some niche scenarios, I think you have to give an entirely different retrain to these cards because you just have to represent how long, the, like, how far the game has come, and you have to adapt the cards to actually do anything. Otherwise, you're just releasing, like, literal shovelware support that nobody wants. But, um... I think for the most part, to, to sometimes make these archetypes good, you do have to just give What is <laughs> what is the wave of support that you are most disappointed by, chat? Like, what is the... I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of it. I, I just thought of that for myself. I'm like, what is the... There's like... there Because like an archetype that has received new support, but it just ended up sucking and you're super disappointed by that. Because the, the thing that comes to my mind is Gladiator Beast. That was the first thing I, I just thought of. I was like, I really love Gladiator Beast from back in the day, but the new support is just such ass, I'm pretty sure. So, like, you just, like, it, it just doesn't count. Uh, I'm also disappointed that we still didn't get, like, good, actual good Necros support because I love that deck to death. And I feel like, you know, I kind of want, uh, I kind of want, I kind of want to play Necros again, but they are just never giving that deck solid support. Um, what are some other examples? Virtual World XYZ? Okay. Twilight Sworn. Oh, yeah, you're right. Twilight Sworn is a very good example. Twilight Sworn is a, is a huge example where, like, bro, I love Light Sworn from back in the day. It's probably kind of hard to balance Light Sworn with those old random-ass mill gamba cards, but still, Twilight Sworn was very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. The Paleo Link? Yeah. I I guess. Yeah, the Paleo Link is disappointing, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of different examples for this. I think there's a lot more examples of legacy support gone horribly wrong than legacy support actually being pog and like making the deck cool now, right? I would argue that for example, 
Thunder Dragon did it pretty well, right? Deck was meta relevant, and outside of Colossus, all the interactions were pretty cool. I think that was a good example. But I think overall, there's way more bad examples of good examples, sadly, which is probably an argument against legacy support, which is that if they can't do it properly, and if, they only dis if they're only going to disappoint me with freaking new Gladiator Beasts or Necros cards that I can't play anyways because they suck, I don't know, then maybe just leave it. Let, maybe just let it be, dude. Give them a new reskin and give them a new lease on life. And sometimes do it a complete 180. Do it right or don't do it at all. You know? Yeah, I, I want to clarify real quick. I have no problem with retrains. Um, I think retrains are a cool take on it. Uh, I have more... Yo, Gigavice, thank you for the tier one. New sub to the channel. Welcome. Appreciate the support. More of a problem when Konami tries to like force a card like Gate Guardian into the square hole of you know play this card in a format where you need to be able to beat a nine zone lock oh i mean that goes back to uh, the gate guardian like the only way i think you were arguing how the the cards are unplayable bricks right the og gate guardian sui Jin in them mm -hmm. like you play the one of and they're og bricks and like you don't like that right no how are you gonna make sui Jin, sangha the thunder and what's well, the last guy yeah, that's... ass blast the the beast boy yeah, what's I his think... name I think it's impossible. Like, yeah, as blast the beast boy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Danix Kirby, thank you for the two months. Yeah, I think what the hell did you call him? Blast the How are you gonna make Sui Jin, Sangha the Thunder, and what's well, the last guy? Yeah, ass blast the the beast boy. Yeah, what's I his think. Name? <laughs> I think it's impossible. Like, yeah, I as blast the beast boy. It's Kazajin, dude. It's not that hard. I think that they should release new versions. <laughs> And we should just have had a retrain archetype. So are you guys in agreement here or no? I can't tell. I think Joseph and Gage are kind of saying the same thing. Yeah, this is this is weird because I feel like we're all saying like pretty similar things, which is going to make it impossible to suss out. I, I feel yeah, like no one here is quite literally saying I heckin love legacy support. I want more of it and I want just just a bunch of legacy support. But I, mean, I do, I think we do have, though. Like, no, I do. I'm but just I want but, more but legacy make, support. Yeah. yeah, like I do want that. I just want it to be good and relevant and synergistic with the yeah. archetype it was made for. Okay, so are we just going into open conversation now? Uh, yeah, I I don't know. Yeah, I, just... I don't know what okay. to ask. Like, okay, so... I, I, I do know a few things to ask here. Farfa, I want to ask you something first because you were saying how you feel as though stuff like uh, Isolde and and Halk are like unbelievably broken and are a bad example of what legacy support should be because they're just overly generic and just too powerful and playable at everything. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, Mr. Burning Abyss Man, feel about Cherubini? Do you feel like that's a bad example of legacy support or is that a good example of legacy support? I th Cherubini is like in the middle, right? Because they do use it in BA and it definitely did help like BA Phantom Knights. It just happens to also have been used in other decks, but it still does help. It's not like the most amazing BA support, but it's it's kind of in the middle. It's not too broken for it to be completely abused in other decks, but like, you know. I think like, because Cherubini okay. hasn't been meta relevant enough, I think there's definitely, absolutely a, a corridor for Cherubini to have broken. Yo, Peverin, thank you so much for the Prime and starting a hype train with that Prime. I appreciate the support. Welcome to the month number two. ...in the game, depending on what the card pool was at the time. Oh, you give it a couple of years, it could still happen. <laughs> yeah, like Cher Cherubini's <laughs> definitely like in that same sort of, um, what's the word, uh, realm of danger that like Isolde Halcar yeah. because of how generic it is. Level two, level threes is pretty generic and Foolish Burial for calls from deck. That could definitely get out of hand. I mean, Cherubini... If you really think about it, Cherubini is just sprint, but for threes, right? <laughs> it's it's just basically that. But it even it's even better than that. It sends for cost, and it can be linked, right? Point. Hmm. Uh, anyway, I don't know really who to pick out here. I would say maybe like I feel like maybe Gage because I feel like maybe you tried to create conflict from nothing really. Why would you think that? <laughs> I want to. I want to hear. Well, more, we need to I catch someone, so I don't know what to yeah. like. I want to hear more what Gage has to say because I understand your point. I understand where you're coming from, but I also would like to know, like, what did you think was a good example of legacy support? What did you think was a bad example of legacy support? <sighs> good examples of legacy support, right? Even the Nataria that I've been playing recently. I think that's actually an okay example of um, legacy support. Like I said, like, sometimes you just have to rip the Band-Aid off and say, like, these archetypes and their general state, like, nobody's going to play fucking Cliff 
No one's gonna play stink bug and stuff like that. We need to, to completely revamp this archetype if it wants to be playable at all. Like who's setting cherries in 2023? Didn't even and name I think the to good like take ones, those dude, steps like, to like completely shoot. make it good. Sometimes you just have to rework the whole thing. And you know what? I, I think that's okay. I think, like, I think that's start fine. from ground zero to make point. an archetype playable. Just utilizing the name, I think, gets people excited, right? Like people really resonate with these archetypes. I think that's a fine point. Like some archetypes, you're just you just gotta accept that you you're not making those old cards playable. At least not all of them. Like Naturia has a healthy mix, right? You play the three new cards, you still play the sunflower from back in the day, you still play the tree. I've seen some people play some of the other ones. You still play um you still play all the like some of the extra deck monsters. Like it's still beast is still the main payoff. Uh, it's still like Barkion in some matchups. It's still, I think that's a fine example of legacy support. Like, of course not. Of course you're not gonna still play all of the cards from like 15 years ago. That's like never going to happen. Or like, what is it? 13 years, 12 years, Naturia support. Like, it's that's fine. But it's a reasonable take, so it's got to be gauge, right? Uh, even if you have to completely rework it to make it <laughs> playable again, it gets players excited. All right, here's one, Joseph. What is Thoughts on the hero legacy support? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Don't do this to me. Um, <laughs> all right. I am fully aware that hero falls into the category of this archetype gets support every 15 days, and it's really annoying for people who don't give a shit about it. But I think that they've done a pretty good job of trickling out new hero cards that play well with the existing hero strategy. Cards. Besides Dark Law, I think he is right. There's been a lot of good hero support that sees play, but like is not complete. Like the the I remember specifically like the one where it changed hero into the going second strategy where you had that thingy malicious bane or whatever. For for a while that was a thing where people started now playing the adusted gold and malicious bane combo, go second OTK type of style hero deck. Uh and that was not, not, it's not, it was never the best deck in the format, but it was like fine. Now it's like the the current version of Hero that starts to go first again. I don't love because it's just Dark Law. And I think Dark Law sets the way for all the other Floodgate thingies. Like, yeah, Dark Angel in itself is not a great design and Plasma as well. But like, I think it's mostly Dark Law that drives that sort of, you know, uh, development. It's like DPE, cards like Wake Up Your E-Hero. I think they are well-designed. I think they DPE, I'm enable fine with. you to play the deck the same way it's been played for a uh, while. I am Patty. Thank you for the tier one. Welcome to the stream. Appreciate that. I think DPE is a very fine support card because now that Verte is banned, if you think about it, DPE sees play exactly where it's meant to see play, which is only in Heroes right now. I have not seen anyone ever play... DPE after after Anaconda ban. Like, uh, uh, heroes play it. Heroes can summon it. It's pretty pog in heroes. It's not a floodgate. Fine card. Fine card. You know, yeah, some people play it. Yeah, okay, you'll always find some freaking counterexample. But for the most part, 99% of people that play DPE are hero players. And that's fine, right? If someone else wants to play the freaking... Uh, fusion destiny and two bricks in their in their rogue deck, whatever that doesn't counter my entire point. I think for the most for the most part, DPE is in heroes now, and he's fine in heroes, and that's that's good. I think that's good legacy support. DPE Dark Law on the other hand was shit. Dark Law Dark Law is one of the biggest issues I have with all of heroes. For a while, I like them, but I get fatigue over them. I understand people who are like, no more heroes, please. <laughs> Well, um, I'm I'm at a loss, bro. I think I've got to guess who it is, though. How? All right, Gage. Um, is it you? For what? Huh? The imposter. <laughs> that was a good. That was a good. That's the question. Yeah. We're trying, we're trying <laughs> to yeah. Question. Is it yes. you? Wait, did you just say yes? What? Did you just say yes? <laughs> no. I swear I heard you say yes. <laughs> no. I think I have my guess. Uh, I'm not super guess. confident in it, but I do have a guess. Okay. All right. Let's go. Okay. I don't have I don't have any idea. I have I have two guesses, but they're mostly based on meta game guesses, not because of what their actual opinion was. The number one thing is like it could always be Gage or Farfa when they're being reasonable. The only other thing I have is like Coder, 
for the most part was very like actively questioning the others, but no one really questioned Coder. So that might be like an imposter strat to be like very aggressive towards the other ones, but not never like, you know, never get asked any, qu like avoid being asked questions. So you ask the other people questions to to try and make them, you know. But I don't know. I'm just I'm just gonna by by my logic. I just have to say gauge because if I say coder now, if I say coder now, and uh, it's gauge, I'm gonna feel so bad. If this person, but I think me, it's like not not easy same, today. Same, okay. same, same. All right, I'm ready when you guys are. I'm ready. I'm ready. Three, two, one. Huh? Was that 90? Bro, what? <laughs> what the hell? I don't know how to react to that. I don't know how to react to that, dude. That's never happened to me. That's never happened to me before. Navian, thank you so much. What the hell? Bro, I appreciate that so much. I appreciate that so much. That's huge. Bro, oh god. If that does not deserve a round of remixes, I don't know what does. We're going we're even I'm even gonna wait to see and find out who the imposter is. Just to play you this remix. I appreciate that so much. Holy shit, that's a level eleven hype train. I've never seen that before. I didn't even know that was a thing. I did not even know that was a thing. That is, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Remix is fixed. It seems like that has fixed the remix. <laughs> you have fixed the remix by getting the hype chain to level 11. Oh, no, it's, it's gone again. Okay. <laughs> okay, Naraxis, thank you for the four. <laughs> uh, yo holy shit uh, yeah thank you so much again i can't i can't overstate how much that means to me thank you for the support this month napian appreciate that a lot it's probably uh, it's probably kevin because of how he's looking it's actually it's me yeah. oh! <laughs> i told you <laughs> i told you it just has to be gauge it just has to be Gage when he's being reasonable. It's just Gage. <laughs> it's so funny how it all it's always true, dude. It's always true. When he's reasonable, it's Gage. <laughs> what? Oh. Yeah. Huh? Oh. So I can so everything that Joseph said right before me like literally echoes exactly what I think. Like I think like um what, what you were saying about how I think the legacy support that's really good is the one where it's like those archetypes released in the last few years where you could be like, man, if only this archetype had a Stratos or this archetype had that one card and then they get that one card and it, it fits in perfectly with the already established They get the prank work. kids link one it, baby! It, it, like it actually just makes it work, right? I think those are like when a legacy support at its best. I actually hate I'm not a fan of like the the entire reskins of stuff like that. I get you can't make Keldo and Ashizu and stuff like that playable without completely revamping the card. But you take a look at something like Sacred Beast, right? Nobody plays the OG Sacred Beast because they all had to get revamped to do anything at all. And like at that point, for the cards to do something completely different, are you actually playing Sacred Beasts? Or are you just playing a new archetype that they decided to put the Sacred Beast name onto, right? I think that's super lazy. And I think it's just better to like, if you're going to make a card that supports an existing archetype, actually make it support the existing cards. Could you imagine if you actually played Naturia Cherries in 2023? That would be dope That'd as be fuck, so bro. Nice. That's a, such that a cool be, card. Be actually, dude, <laughs> well, like, technically it's cool. But I don't want to play Naturia Cherries because that card is going to feel bad if I draw it every time. That's not a feel-good moment. That's not a feel good moment. I mean, like, bro, I don't want to play. I don't want to play. Uh, I don't want to play Naturia Cherries. It's when you said hard debated. You said, I didn't. I had no read on Gage at all. I'm gonna be honest. All right, we gotta wrap this one up. Oh, I mean, okay. I thought we already wrapped it. Wrap up. Wrap it up like, like a little, like a, like a little sandwich. Your little channel. outro. <laughs> yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, come back next time.
<laughs> Bye. There you go. That's it. That's the Bye. end. Bye. <laughs> okay. Uh, I like these. It's like when I when I some of these is like things that I've never thought about, and I didn't know that I wanted to think about it, but it's still very interesting. You know, I'm like. I've never asked myself that question, but I'm very happy that I am now uh, discussing this. I, I think it's very enjoyable overall. And then you add in the freaking the imposter thingy to it too. It's a great, I think it's a great format. I like this. Very fun, very fun. And this time we did snipe gauge. Like I said, this one would have hurt. This one would have hurt a lot if we if we said coder and then it's actually, it's just like, we can't, we can't let that happen. It's just, we lose too much mental sanity if we stop punishing gauge for being reasonable.